that we have left with him. Uh, David Icke, please continue. Well, you know, we've reached the point in this um, in this unfolding uh, conspiracy to create this uh, centralized global Orwellian state where it's broken the surface. I mean, for a long time, it was uh, op- operating under the surface where, where people couldn't see it. But for it to become uh, installed in place, it had at some point had to break the surface where people could actually see it. So this is a, a, a time of, of, of great challenge, but it's also a time of great opportunity because people um, uh, more and more can't just go into denial and, and, and ask wh- when the next game shows on because this is now starting to impact on their lives. And I've just come back from Croatia um, where the, 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 the interest in this uh, whole uh, information that we put out is just, it just took me aback. People are starting to wake up to it. And uh, so there's a the challenge, uh, yes, there is, but there's also an opportunity as people can see that what we've been saying is actually now um, happening. So those two things are going together. And uh, in this, uh, if you like, final run-in to this uh, uh, Orwellian uh, imposition that they want, and is, of course, unfolding very, very fast all over the world, they're now throwing everything they can at us. They want to hit us from emotionally, financially, on all um, levels. And one of them, of course, is, is, is creating fear through finance because money is, is what everyone is frightened of not having in this world where it is so important to choice and life and living and survival. But they're also going to um, hit us and, and, uh, on the, the level of uh, a third world war. I'm uh, absolutely convinced and have been for a very long time. They want a third world war involving North America, particularly Europe, Russia, and China. And this uh, whole business in Georgia has been part of the moving of the chess pieces to uh, uh, advance that uh, along the road to when it actually breaks out uh, and possibly involving the Middle East and Israel as a trigger. But it's a time when we've really got to um, reevaluate our lives and reevaluate our priorities and realize that we're facing not just a massive challenge for ourselves now, but an enormous challenge for our, our children and grandchildren. That's right. If because we don't say no now, they're going to be able, the, the, the New World Order social architectures you know in their own textbooks going back 100 years ago, and the different PhDs were put out from Germany and England on this said, they, they unfreeze societies with crisis and fear, because societies are normally mm-hmm. rigid, people like the status quo. But they say it's a danger because they, when things are unfrozen, can mold things the way they want, but all Also, the resistance can mold things. And so this is that window, the enemy's window, our window. That's why all of you have got to shine brighter than ever. What David was saying is that everything is yin and yang in this world, for every action an equal reaction. And so all over the world, uh, 9-11 truth, everything is exploding like never before. The disinfo operatives are telling us it's all dead. They're panicking. You know, They're trying to tell us, you've already lost. You will be assimilated. When we have a really big chance here, and talk about Orwellian, a sneak attack by the U.S. and Israel back, NATO back, Georgia, on these Russian enclaves, and talk about mind control, our media comes and says Russia snuck attack. I mean, if that isn't Orwellian, please continue. Well, the whole thing in, in, in Georgia um, uh, came originally from the uh, the so-called People's Revolution there. And uh, these um, People's Revolutions, these spontaneous uh, people's uh, protests, which led to the overturning of the of the regime in power, um, were invariably manipulated to bring that about. I mean, in, in Georgia, the um, so-called Rose Revolution, uh, which Im- involved uh, a, a, in a high-profile way, a man called Charles Vahili, who then became the president, um, was funded by George Soros. Um, and uh, students were trained in large numbers in the art of civil di- di- disobedience and civil protest, which led to that. And so not only did uh, the uh, forces that control uh, American society uh, take advantage of the uh, Georgian Revolution and and turn it into yet another 51st state of the United States, um, they actually um, created the revolution in the first place. And this happened throughout 
And, and there's always there's uh, always former Eastern European communist countries. And David, there's always other layers. Meanwhile, Soros acts like he's against Bush, but then it turns out yeah. his funded group worked with the CIA and with Bush and McCain's uh, advisor, who's Georgian. So again, uh, the, on the surface, they're fighting with each other, but behind the scenes, they're not. It's like Mary Madeline's and married to George Carville. Uh, and, you know, exactly. And the, the, th the thing is that I've seen uh, people responding to this uh, invasion of South Ossetia by Georgia and then the uh, Russian response uh, as if, hey, you know, uh, the Americans have got to be crazy or, or, or whatever. Uh, did they not realize Russia was going to respond like that? Of course they did. That's part of the game. It's causing this uh, rushing up of the fear, the rushing up of the... Yeah, that uh, crashed the, 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 the Russian stock market that was going up while ours was going down. Now theirs has been shut down for two days. Yeah, I mean, you, th these are all masks on the same face. It's a chessboard. As Order out of Zinsky chaos. As even wrote about. Yes. It's a chessboard, and we're seeing the pieces uh, moving around. And, and, and what I, I, I would say to people is if, if you think, um, you know, you don't like the world as it is now, well, it ain't going to stay like this. This is not the point where they wish to be and, and, and pitch their tent and say, okay, we've got control. They want to... Uh, push this forward um, in, in, in a much more extreme way, even than it is now, far more. And if it's bad now, what is it going to be like for our children and our grandchildren? They're going to have to live most of their lives in this uh, Orwellian nightmare that well, is moving so fast. That, like, they're not even going to live, David. Cranky. They're not even going to live. In fact, you've written about this before yeah. I was even on the scene, but I want you to get into the population plan. Open UN biological diversity assessments. Open uh, government plans, PDDs, uh, uh, State Department Memorandum 200, uh, the Royal Commission on Population. It is World government is only a means to an end. Let's talk about that end where they debate whether to kill 100% of the humans and, and then make themselves these cybernetic god creatures. That's not me, that's them, that's mainline. Or... And again, I'm not even saying that's real. That's what they believe. You know, David would say that, that it probably is. The point is, is that it's so wild what they write and say. The debate is kill everyone or kill 99% or kill down to 80%. David, talk about that. The end game, well, where this is going. Well, the point I, I really want to get over is that, you know, I, I have, I've been, uh, you know, with this for, for many, many years, as you have, and um in the end, we, we uh, as people, people listening to this show and all shows like it, we have got to uh, move from just learning more and more and more about our own prison and how it works. That's important to know. It really is. We've got to get to the point now where we say, what the heck are we going to do about it? And we have to stop um, uh, being divided and ruled by the fault lines of religion and class and income bracket and culture and country and realize that um, where we're going here and the cell door is swinging and, and we've just got a, a a bit of time here to, to stop it uh, crashing shut, but not if we just talk about it and shout about it, we've got to start getting organized and, and, and respond to this. And what we need is to stop uh, uh, cooperating with our own enslavement. We, we need yes. mass um, peaceful uh, uh, non-cooperation with the system. Here's stop, one. Here's uh, one. Everybody... Otherwise, we're building our own prison. Everybody should put up a micro FM and carry radio shows like this. It's civil disobedience. We've got NORTHCOM declaring martial law right here in the Army Times saying regular brigades of Army troops will be in the U.S. I agree. You know, put up micros to, to show the slaves their prison to unlock their minds. But us at a higher level, go to the city council, say, don't be part of this. Don't be part of martial law. David, uh, how else do we not comply? I mean, what do we do when they put a camera up by our house? Well, in the end, we have got to um, uh, peacefully um, resist um, the imposition of this enslavement. And, and even on a, take a real simple level, um, you, in Britain now, you can get fined seventy-five pounds um, for um, putting your trash can out on the or bin out on the wrong day. Now, instead of, and I hear it all the time, Alex. Oh, what's the world coming to? Oh, I don't know. Whatever next? I don't know. It's terrible, isn't it? And then, and 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 then. They, they switch the game show on. We've got to start, all of us, whether we're Christian or Muslim or, or, or Jewish or whatever, because 
this prison is not for one group. It's for all of us who are not part of it. And they play us off against each other to control us. Stay there. We're going to talk behind scenes for InfoWars.com. they do. Stream listeners and PrisonPlanet.tv viewers. David Icke's coming to the U.S. Check it out at DavidIcke.com. Stay with us. Okay, David, continue with examples of saying no. Continue with okay. examples of, of, I mean, it starts small.